What's up, everyone? Welcome into Dodger Heads, presented by DodgerBlue.com, part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network. My name is Jeff Spiegel, joined today by DodgerBlue.com, Scott Gearman. Scott, yesterday was a weird one for Dodger fans. The Dodgers do go ahead and win another big hit from rookie James Outman, kind of breaking out of a slump a bit. But the headline, Scott, was on the starting pitching front, where Dustin May, the team's probably second best pitcher so far this season, exits after just one inning. The velocity was down. Dave Roberts afterwards said, quote, it's an IL. When he returns to play, I don't know that answer. Scott, what do you make of the Dustin May situation and how the Dodgers kind of navigate a, a day like yesterday and the bad news that comes with it? Honestly, it's just a, a weird occurrence. You know, after the first inning, he goes out there, uh, has a, himself a clean inning yeah. and gets pulled. And it just, I kind of sat there and I was like, oh man, it just, it looked frustrating. Um, and for for Dave to say that he's just not sure. Yeah. And uh, give kind of a TBD timeline, you know, put some, puts Dustin May in kind of a state of flux because you kind of have to wait and see how he responds, how that elbow feels. And, you know, it, it's, I'm, I'm thankful that their immediate thing was we're shutting him down and then it's just kind of a wait and see mode. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you look at Dustin May, of course, has already undergone Tommy John surgery, um, just recovered, made six starts last year, nine starts this year. So he's only 15 starts removed from that Tommy John surgery. Now, there is some good news and there is some weird news that came out as this story has sort of unfolded, Scott, in the last 24 hours. The good news, not a UCL tear, and he could be back in four to six weeks. That's kind of I think Dave Roberts said the minimum would be a month. It could be longer, but. I think the headline here is it's not a UCL tear. They did scans. It's a strain, I believe, is the language. So they're not expecting another Tommy John surgery. But here's the weird news that has come out. And this is Fabian Ardaya of The Athletic reporting that Dustin May had actually been pitching with soreness throughout his entire rehab assignment. They just assumed it was normal. Turns out it wasn't. This is part of the injury that never healed properly. And so I, I don't know what to make of that. Like, it's weird that this guy made 15 starts after – rehab assignments where he was dealing with soreness it that seems concerning to me yeah i wonder if that's something that's kind of snowballed like it happened early on and it, it, i'm going to give the dodgers the benefit of the doubt here that because they've you know dealt with a few guys but this is also the second instance where you know that you've had a tommy john guy come back and get hurt again walker yeah. bueller dustin may but i'll still give them a little bit of a credit that they've been able to navigate these arm injuries with their pitchers fairly well. So for him to continue pitching through that soreness, I'm not a doctor. I'm not an yeah. expert on that. I can just say that anytime you're pitching through persistent soreness, I would say throughout his rehab process does sound kind of concerning, but if they thought it was normal and that he would eventually shake it, I wonder if Dustin may kind of just said, I've heard it was normal. And if it's still going to happen, if it's still been going on this entire time, I wonder if that should have stopped or he just kept trying to push through it. It just kind of came to a head. Yeah. And you mentioned Walker Bueller. I mean, that's the other piece of this storyline is just within the last couple of days. We also got news that what we thought was Walker Bueller's injury was not necessarily his injury. So now yeah. Scott in, in just a week, you've got one instance where what we believed about Walker Bueller, what we were told about Walker Bueller, or at least led to believe <laughs> was not accurate. And now with Dustin May, we're just finding out after the fact that he got hurt, that he's been dealing with soreness this yeah. entire time. I'm with you. I give the Dodgers the benefit of the doubt. Like they have way more invested in Dustin May and Walker Bueller's long-term sort of outlook and their careers. And so they aren't going to do any, the Dodgers have told us with their actions, they're not going to do anything to put these guys in danger necessarily. And yet just as fans, as people that are kind of covering the team to some degree, it is weird to know that now twice we have not been told a key piece of information in the recovery and the injury timeline of two different pitchers. Yeah. Walker Bueller, you know, he, he did have a, you know, ligament reconstruction. Like they did replace the ligament as well, but it wasn't a full tear. They said they found some bone fragments on there and, you know, his timeline is, you know, walk to Walker Bueller's, uh, you know, where he, it's, it's pretty accelerated. And Dave Roberts yeah. kind of walked that back, slow played it. He said September 1st, but, if you haven't had a chance to look into that story, look into the Walker Bueller thing and, and see how that kind of makes you not question things, but kind of when there is an injury, let's wait and actually, to, you know, maybe until they're back on the field and then, you know, they'll reveal exactly what was what went on what there, which they're entitled to do. And it's kind of it's frustrating, but 
it's you know we'll never we don't really know all the time yeah and check out dodgerblue.com we got all the info there so last question on the dustin may front scott which is where do the dodgers go from here they've now got a spot in the rotation it sounds like for at least four to six weeks i would guess longer like if you gave me the over under at six weeks i would take the over i think they're going to slow play this i think they're going to take their time so I, I would say probably we're looking at two months as a minimum um on, on paper there's four obvious options as potential replacements um, long term, you've got Ryan Pepio, Michael Grove, Gavin Stone, and Bobby Miller. Now, Pepio and Grove have begun throwing. Both those guys are recovering from injuries of their own, but neither has gone out on a rehab assignment. So Monday, when when May's turn comes back around, it will not be Pepio. It will not be Grove. Everybody assumes it will be Gavin Stone, who is on track to make that start. He, of course, made one appearance already at the major league level. And then you've got Bobby Miller, a guy that the Dodgers sort of shut down to begin the season, let him slowly build up his innings. But as we sit here on Thursday, he made a great start on Wednesday, his longest of the season, six innings, two hits, one earned, one walk, six strikeouts, and throwing over 70 pitches. This is a guy who's on the 40-man roster. This start happened at AAA. He's the team's highest-rated pitching prospect. And so do you think, Scott, there's any chance that Bobby Miller is actually the guy who maybe not Monday, but but beyond Monday, is maybe the guy who long-term ends up filling in for Dustin May? Do you think it's Stone for one start, and then maybe their hopeful Pepio or Grove could be ready in the next couple of weeks? Where do you think the Dodgers go from here? I would honestly say, uh, just like in your graphic, I would say it's the first three. I would honestly say Gavin Stone. You know, he kind of lines up. He just started, I believe, on uh, Tuesday. Wednesday. I think it was Wednesday. Yeah, say, well, 16th. Yeah, Gavin oh, Stone right. just started on the 16th. So he's kind of lined up to run in that spot. He could slide right into Dustin May's turn in the rotation, I think. You know, he's been fine. He just struck out 10 in his most yeah. recent outing, 14 over his last um, 11 innings. So I think he, that I like, I actually, I do like that when a guy gets called up, gets sent down, and he can kind of get a taste for how what what it's like to pitch in the big league. So uh, for me, I would say Gavin Stone kind of makes the most sense. Uh, Pepio, Grove, when they're ready to go, they can supplement that, turn that into a you know six man, and yeah. go from there and kind of give them some you know extra turns. And that you know we'll find they'll find spots for the arms. But I think that Gavin Stone's the most this easiest fit for the rotation. I think he, that's where they'll probably go. Bobby Miller though, uh, that's extremely encouraging. I actually did see that, you know, six strikeouts. He had his, you know, best start of the year. You know, basically doubled his, um, doubled his innings on the year. So it's yeah. been, it was a fantastic thing to see. So let's get excited about Bobby Miller, but I think Gavin Stone will be the next guy to go right into a um, Dustin May slot. Yeah, you mentioned he had 10 strikeouts in his last start, just five and two thirds. The fastball velocity was up. The number that blew my mind was he had a 44% whiff rate. So guys yeah. swung at his pitches 55 times. They missed 24 of those 55. So I'm with you. I think Stone probably gets at least two turns through the rotation. If he struggles, then maybe Pepio or Grove, if one of those guys is ready, would be the next one. I, I just would say, keep an eye on Miller. He's at 73 pitches. If they're yeah, going to limit his great, innings right? and they're going to limit his pitches, I get that. But if he's ready to throw 80 pitches, like he could be throwing those at the major leagues. It's, it's it's a higher stress level, sure, but they need it. A couple other names I'll just throw out there as names to watch. Landon Knack, another guy that, that people don't necessarily mention a whole lot. He's a righty. He's 25. He was a second round pick back in 2020. He's quietly been really, really good at AAA. This is a guy who, you know, was a senior in college. So he's got some experience um, in the long run. But in the month of May, he's got a 1.74 ERA. In April, he had a 1.45 ERA. Um, he hasn't allowed more than two runs in any of his, um, six starts this season. His whip is 0.86. He's striking out about a guy per inning. So that's a name to watch. And then one other one that, that our friend, Justin Lorber mentioned on Twitter yesterday, who's at double a and who would potentially take stone spot at triple a is Emmett Sheehan. Um, he's another guy just to keep an eye on 58 strikeouts in 34 innings at double a this year, a 1.85 ERA, a 51% whiff rate. Uh, last night for double A. So you want to talk about Stone's 44%. Sheehan was at 51%. It was a double A. So just uh, and I name to keep an eye on because if he gets called up to triple A and continues pitching the way he's been yeah. pitching, he could be a name to watch as the season goes on. So we agree. We think it's going to be Gavin Stone, um, Pepio Grove, and I would say Miller all sort of floating around Landon Knack, a name to keep an eye on as well. That's Scott Gearman. My name is Jeff Spiegel. As always, we appreciate you joining us here at Dodger Blue. 
Check out DodgerBlue.com for all the latest. Uh, subscribe, ring the notification bell here on YouTube as well. Enjoy the rest of your day, and of course, go Dodgers.